Acts 26. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. Look at all the times Paul gets to speak to these councils. I think myself happy, King Agrippa. He's preaching before kings, Roman kings, and all the people in the courtroom. Because I show because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things where I am accused of the Jews. Especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. So this King Agrippa, he knows what goes on with the Jews. He's studied them. He's no dummy. Uh, Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, known all the Jews. So according to Paul's youth, he was growing up in Jerusalem. Which knew me from the beginning. If they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. All right, King Agrippa. Ask those Jews. They knew I grew up in Jerusalem from a young child. They knew I grew up in and as a Pharisee. That was the stricter of the strict of Israel. And now I stand and judge for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. The covenant made to our fathers. King Agrippa, you already know what's going on. You know the covenants. You know of the uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's happened. It has happened in your time, King. It has happened in the Jewish time, these people here. It has happened. Unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serve God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. You know what, the, you know what my people have been waiting for? It's happened. All the prophets. Jesus said at this time, and I'm not quoting correctly, but he says, Abraham desired to see this day. It's come. The Messiah has come. That prophet that be likened to Moses, he's come. The Messiah has come. All the prophecies concerning her first advent have happened 100%. King Agrippa, what the Jews have written about their Messiah has happened, fulfilled. That's what I'm preaching. This is what they're questioning. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? So there's that resurrection again. For I verily thought with, him, with myself, that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We're going to get to Paul. With uh, which things I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison. Having received the authority of the chief priests. The ones who were, or brought me to this trial. Ask them. I was a strict religious zealot for the, the Phariseeism. I went and got these Christians of Jesus of Nazareth. Asked the chief priest. He signed them letters. And when they and they were put to death. Wait a minute, hold on. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, many of the saints did I shut up in prison. You know why he's been in prison? Because he put Christians in prison. Having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And we find this, I read in, in Deuteronomy 13, about the false... Paul... <coughs> excuse me. Paul thought that these guys were bringing a new God. And Deuteronomy 13 says, you're to stone them. Paul is in zeal of the law, not knowing... That the God that they're bringing is Jehovah, Jesus Christ. And Paul says, listen, when they were put to death, I stood on the council against them. And I punished them off in every synagogue. He put his hands to them. 
and compelled them to blasphemy. He made Christians deny Jesus Christ and lie. And being exceedingly mad against him, I mean, this ferocious, mad, I persecuted them even unto strange cities, cities that were even no Jews. I stepped out of that Jewish bond, that Jewish boundary, that Jewish land to get these people. I was crazily angry with them. I made them lie. I made them deny the faith. I put them in jail. I even consented to them to die, King Agrippa. Ask them. Go ahead, ask them. Ask those Jewish council what I did. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, there they are, those are the ones. Ask them. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, the hottest over your head sun, the noonday sun, and there was a light that was brighter than that. Shine around about me and them which journey with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, well, look at that, that may be our language in heaven. I think Hebrew speaks about that. We're all going to be Hebrew scholars one day, I guess. Just not now. So you won't be pressing one for English. English is not the language of God. Hebrew. Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 10 and 11, he said he persecuted, the, I'm calling them Christians. They weren't called Christians yet. The, 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 the disciples of the Lord. And Jesus said, why persecute thou me? Jesus takes it personal what you do to a child of God. You yell at him, Jesus says, why'd you yell at me? You spit in him, Jesus says, why'd you spit in me? You kill him, why'd you kill me? You whipped him, why'd you whip me? You cuss in their face, <coughs> why'd you cuss in my face? Jesus takes it personal. So realize with any ministry that you're involved in, whatever, however they treat you, good or bad, they're doing it to Jesus, they're not doing it to you. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He was mad. You know, Paul's heart, the Holy Spirit, been working on the whole time to get right. And it just inflamed him. And I said, who art thou, Lord? Wait a minute, wait a minute. The strictest of the Pharisees of the sect of the sect of the sect sect. You don't even know who the Lord is when he speaks to you? Come on, Paul, how many times did you hear a voice in your head with a very bright light? How many times have you had that happen in your life? And you don't know it's Jesus? You don't know it's Jehovah? What's wrong with you, Paul? This happened every... No, it doesn't. You're such a strict religionist, you don't even recognize when God gives you light and God gives you a voice in your ear. You don't even recognize it. What about Peter? Come follow me and make you fishermen. All right, let's go, James, John, come follow me. I'll make you feel, all right, bye, Dad. See you. We're going. Did they get a big light? No. Did they get, you know, the voice of God speak to them? Yes. And they even acknowledge, hey, come, we found the Messiah. Nathan, we found the Messiah. Paul, who art thou? You see what religion does to you? It blinds you to God. Take this experience with the disciples when Jesus, boom, we know who he is. Remember, Paul had to been baptized of John's baptism to be an apostle, and he had to learn the fact is that John said, Behold the Lamb of God is right there. There he is. See him? There he is. He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Look at that. He did not lay one hand on Jesus. 
He laid hands on children of God, sons of God, and Jesus said, What you do to me? Many popes, many priests and nuns will have to give an account, probably the great white throne judgment, I can safely say, and give an account of everyone that suffered, plus those names that are not written in Fox's Book of Martyrs. A Muslim will stand before Jesus Christ on how many Christians he killed with that suicide bomb under his belt. Would you do that for me? You were expecting virgins. Ah, meet Jehovah. Every time something happens to a Christian, a disciple, a child of God, Jesus writes that down as, it's happened to me. Now be warned. Because I've, I've been saved since 1987. I've seen many Christians pull away because of other Christians. And when a Christian goes away back to the world because of you, Jesus takes that personally. When you mock and talk about another Christian behind their back, Jesus takes it personally. When you gossip, about another Christian. Jesus takes it personally. You're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Would you do that to me for? Well, I did about that. It's me. You did it to me. Every offense against a child of God, you will have to give an account before God as you did it to God. How's that? I wouldn't want to be in those shoes. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Here's the purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, the light. He's going to use his, Paul's going to use his testimony more than what's recorded in Acts. Paul, just go tell him what happened to you. And of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Paul is going to get other revelations. He's going to speak about mysteries that even Peter said, some of these writings of Paul, wow. <laughs> okay. hard They're hard to understand. I'm trying to think of, of the words. He speaks about marriage and the church, the relation. Where did you find that in the Gospels? Where did you find that anywhere taught in Acts? Nowhere. I want to say seven mysteries. I don't know if they all belong to Paul. But I know Paul speaks mysteries. And he dumbfounds the, the apostles. What are you doing telling these Gentiles, no, circumcision only? Okay. We're not under that law. Meanwhile, all Israel, the Jews, are getting saved and they're doing some of the things of the law. Not for salvation, but for a testimony. Paul's got this. And either Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, or Colossians, he's going to say, listen, he goes off to Arabia and has a little Bible study with God alone before he comes back and starts teaching. And God calls him a minister. Do you know all the great acts that Paul has done? And yet I know people call themselves ministers and they don't do nothing. Of one ten percent of what Paul has done, but yet they get the title minister. You know what minister means? It means to give, to help, to aid, to do something. Many ministers that I have known, they expect the church to take care of them. They expect the church to do something for them. They don't. They don't lift a finger at all. Minister is a verb that you for others. Witness both of these things which thou hast seen, of the things which in which I will appear unto thee later on. <clears throat> delivering thee from the people, the Jews, the Gentiles. Remember, he, at one point, he, he, he's, well, he's telling his testimony, but later on, he's going to be stoned, if not deaf, near deaf, and God says, okay, get up and go. He's led down, in, down a wall in a barrel. Get out of here. <laughs> he's locked up in prison. An earthquake opens up the gates. Deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles. Oh, the people are the Jews and the Gentiles. Unto whom I send thee. So Peter is the apostle to the Jews. 
Try telling that to a Catholic. Oh, wait a minute. The Catholics steal all the Jews' promises, don't they? That's why they grab Peter. That's why they don't grab Paul. Paul is Gentiles. Gentiles get no land. That church wants land. Gentiles don't fight as saved Christians. The Jews were allowed to fight. The Jews were allowed to go in the land and wipe everybody out. So if we want to bring in our kingdom with weapons, we'll choose Peter, not Paul. But we'll have a couple of our popes called Paul. This will make it look good, doesn't it? Unto whom I send thee. So Paul is primarily sent to Gentiles, but he has a love for his brethren. He is standing before Agrippa now, I think it's Caesarea, because he disobeyed God and trying to get to the Jews to open their eyes and to turn from darkness to light, 2 Corinthians 4 4. And from the power of Satan un unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, not church membership, not baptism, not anything, but only Jesus Christ. That revelation wasn't given to Peter in the beginning. Peter said, repent and be baptized. Paul says, faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. Go back and, and listen to what we've studied so far. Only one that ever said anything like that was Philip. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. I, I did exactly what Jesus told me to do. But showed first unto them of Damascus. He went to Damascus and at Jerusalem, he goes back to Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, outer parts of the world, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet. For repentance. Look at that. You have to do works after salvation to show that you repented of God. There it is. James says it. There it is. The man that wrote, with the heart man believes on the righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation, said, you better have works to prove that you repented. You better be a disciple. You better be one disciplined or God, or I'm going to treat you as a lost man. That's Paul saying that. Paul would walk up on his three journeys. If he came to an area and he saw a Christian living like the world, he would treat him like the world. He wouldn't call him a disciple. He wouldn't give him the time of day only to repent and get right. If not, see you later. Come a long way in Christianity. For these came, uh, for these causes, the Jew caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Oh, I thought he brought Gentiles in there. I thought he had an uproar. I thought he caused a riot. No, it's because of what he was preaching. What, what is he preaching? The death, burial, resurrection, repentance, forgiveness of sins by Jesus Christ, who is God. That's what they're angry with. You know, you could not go to Israel today, I am, I am told, by a reliable source. You can't go over there and, and be a missionary and open up the Bible and teach Jews about the gospel. It, you're prevented. You got to go in there as an underground church. You got to go in there as somebody else. Almost like China. Almost like Russia. You can't just walk in and say, hi, I'm a Bible believing Christian. I want to teach your people the way. No, they won't let you in. And there's one guy that I'm told that's over there and he's got to do it, you know, person to person. House to house. But he can't do it on the street. Having therefore attained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other thing than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. That's the only thing that he has. He may now have a copy of the Gospel of Luke. But other than that, when he walks in these synagogues, what's he going to do? Open up the Gospel of Matthew? Not written yet. Maybe. Possibly. He's going to open up the, the Gospel of John? Nope. Well, it's going to be written for a long time. 
He's going to walk in those synagogues like he's done. We've read over and over. He gets off the ship. He goes in this, on the Sabbath in the synagogue. The, the minister gets up there, reads from the Old Testament. Anybody got anything to say? And he would take what that minister probably said that day and retort to Jesus Christ. See, you can't. I tried it. Foolishness. And I had a Jewish person tell me. I tried using math, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and the Pauline epistles, and Revelation. And finally, I just had a Jew tell me one time, I said, listen, I don't believe that. We don't believe that. You want to witness the Jews, you got to go through that Old Testament. you got to study that Old Testament. you got to show Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. You're not going to get a Jew in the New Testament to after they're saved. And you say, well, that's impossible. That's exactly what Paul's doing. What New Testament scriptures does he have? He would say, hey, you remember when uh, Jesus died on that cross? Yeah. Well, let's look at that Passover lamb. He said, not a bone of it to be broken, right? Well, what happens if you guys would have stoned him? You would have broke his bone. What time did that Passover lamb to be killed? Six o'clock. What time did Jesus die? Wasn't there a period of a week that you were to examine that lamb? Yeah. Well, John's gospel tells us exactly what happened that week. John's gospel tells us that the chief priest and the, and the, uh, uh, the Sanhedrin would study Jesus. Pilate studied Jesus. And Pilate and Herod of the kingdom said, we find no default in that lamb. And yet the Jews had to kill him. Remember, where was the blood put? It was put in the side of the doors and up above the lantern, right? But wasn't there a thief here? Wasn't there a thief? It wasn't God there in the middle. He would take those stories and the, the prophecies in the Bible. A, a prophet like unto Moses. And he would show them exactly how Jesus matched Moses. And he lifted up the serpent. Lifted up the serpent. All that, Paul would take the testimony and the scriptures. And it worked because how many Jews got saved? Including the Gentiles. How many got saved when he does not have the New Testament? Or well, like I said, probably by now he may have the, the Gospel of Luke. And Christ should suffer. Isaiah 53. One place right there. And you got to be careful because the Jews will say Isaiah 53 is them. And the person doing the persecution and causing the suffering is the Gentiles. Be careful. You got to break down Isaiah 53 and show them exactly what happened to Jesus Christ. And that he should be the, the first that should rise from the dead. That's interesting. Go through the Old Testament. Well, didn't Elias go into this woman and uh, this woman's child? Didn't he come alive? Yeah. But didn't he die again? Oh, well, yeah. Well, there's a resurrection, but there was a death. Jesus Christ arose from the grave. Remember, 400 people in your city said they saw Jesus. Yeah, and it's recorded that he ascended by 12 men, 13. If you count Manias and the other gentleman there, they voted on to take Judas's place. 13 men said they saw angels and saw Jesus go to the Father. Stephen, when you killed him, said, I saw St Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. You heard, St I was there, remember guys? Remember I held your coats when you, what did Stephen say? Man, he's letting them have it. And you're not going to kill Jesus anymore, unlike the Catholic teaching that we're going to kill him every, every mass, you know, to eat him. Realize Paul is giving these chief priests, he's, that's why they hate him. You ain't going to kill him again. And remember what Stephen said? You remember what Jesus told you? You remember what Pilate? Man, he throws it right in their face. Amen. It should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. See, the people, Jews, and the Gentiles. There's only one people in the Bible, and that's Jews. Not Americans. There's one people above all people in the eyes of God, Jews. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. 
And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning does make thee mad. <laughs> Man, this guy, whoa, shut up. You know too much. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knows of these things. You know this, king. You, it's not done in the dark. The life of Jesus, though it's not written, you knew what happened. Before, before whom I also speak freely, I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from thee. You've heard it all, King Agrippa. You are a witness to what I told you. You've heard my name. I guarantee you, you've heard my testimony. When Paul got saved, what was the big thing when Paul wanted to come to church next uh, Sunday morning? You mean the one that wants to kill us and persecute us? Oh, no, Paul. Don't tell me Paul's not making a stink when he in his old ways before the Romans. Oh, there goes that Paul again, causing trouble. We got enough problems with those with those Jews. Now he's going out there killing people and putting them in jail. Oh, those Jews. I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. Everything of the apostles, everything of Jesus Christ was open. As Bible-believing churches are, they're open. Come on in. Can I walk into the Mormon church? And Can I walk into a Jehovah Witness? Can I walk into a lodge meeting? I mean, just outright meetings. Ask who I am, what I am. Absolutely not. you got to get to their different degrees. King Agrippa, believeth thou the prophets? Ooh. I know thou believeth. Oh, Paul. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Well, let's go back over here. Let's go back to what, uh, verse 25 of 24. This is Felix. He reasoned righteousness, temperance, judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. For, uh, Felix says, uh, Later date. Salvation. Later date. Festus says. Almost. Almost. You know what that almost does? That almost pushes you right into hell. Don't come to me and say. Well I'm almost saved. That's not going to work. You've got to be saved. Almost thou persuaded me. To be a what? How much did Agrippa knew? He knew they were calling them Christians from Antioch. That's see how much he knew. He knew their name. He knew their title. And God said, "Okay, Paul, I know you're in rebellion. I know you did not tell me what to do. But there's a man there. I'm working on his heart. He knows what the truth is. I want you to walk up to his face. I want you to tell him about Jesus Christ. And it's up to him and his salvation. You just tell him." And King Agrippa's foot, almost. That's not good enough. The Bible says you've got to believe with your heart. He didn't. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, man, I wish you I wish you get right. I wish you would believe. Not only that, but also all that hear me this day. I hope you will all get saved. Look at Paul. Paul is pleading. But he's not going to hurry up and say, okay, say this prayer and get saved. Notice that. He's like, listen, you need to do this. I hope everybody would do this. And he's not going to break out with this little prayer. Hear me this day, we're both almost. He uses his word, almost. And all together. Don't be almost. Be all together. Such as I, saved, 
Be like me, a believer in Christ, a Christian, a child of God, a disciple. Be like me, Agrippa. Everyone here, be like me, saved and knowing and happy and enjoying. Except these bonds. I wish you were all like me except for the handcuffs and have to go to jail. How's that? Paul's not wishing anything. He wishes they were to be saved. And when he had thus spoken, when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. When they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man does nothing worthy of death or of bonds. He's innocent. He's not guilty. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty. I'll let him go right now. I'll let him go home. If he had not appealed unto Caesar, Paul's going to lose more time. And they were going to let him go. You see how wimpy this government is? The same thing with Jesus. I find no fault in him. All right, there's, there's Calvary. I find no fault in him. He's innocent. Okay, we're going to send him to Caesar. Where's the big question? Where's the big thought? Festus, what about you and Jesus? Well, I would let the apostle go, but that's not good enough. They never, Bernice, Festus, and everyone that sat there, not one of them believed Jesus Christ. They almost... And Paul said, I wish you all almost. Not everybody had an almost. But none of those high people that stood there and listened to Paul as judges came all together. And we're left here with Paul. He's going back to jail. And he's going to go to Rome. But it's going to be a rocky way to Rome. Should have already been there. But even Paul in rebelling against the way of God, the will of God, these Roman leaders, the chief priests, have heard the word of God. The chief priests have heard it over and over and over and over. Uh, you got... Uh, I mean, you got Felix, Agrippa, Festus. It's a shame that you can preach the word. You can be like Paul on fire and not everybody's going to get saved. And you know what some churches would call that right there by close of this chapter? Paul was a failure because he didn't have a notch on his, on his belt of getting people saved. That's Paul. People walked away almost. People walked away, well, I'll do it later. when well, you're not saved. Paul didn't call for no prayers. He didn't call for no uh, uh, carnival activities. He didn't call for anything. He said, hey, I preach the gospel. That's up to you. All right, next. What's next? I get to throw him.